Welcome to Sports Federation TV, the show that looks after sport in the Western Cape. I'm Linyuk Thachetti and I'll be your presenter today. We have a jam-packed show this evening. We chat to climbing, sailing and junior football. First up is Chris Nodia from Western Cape Climbing. Hello Chris, how are you? Hi Linyuk, very well thank you. Thank you for the opportunity to let me explain to people a little bit about what climbing is about. Um, climbing is a lot more than just scaling the dawn wall as uh, we've recently seen or conquering Everest. Uh, here in the Western Cape, climbing is, is actually quite a big sport. Um, we have three different disciplines of climbing. We have the tr traditional climbing, which is the, the, where, where it all started, uh, going up faces on Table Mountain or, or any of the, the surrounding mountains in, in, in the Western Cape. And we have sport climbing, which is an extension of, of uh, traditional climbing. The main difference there being that instead of relying on gear that you've placed yourself and little widgets that you can use to hold yourself safe, uh, we, people have drilled and uh, secured bolts into, eye, eye bolts into the mountain. So and the you can clip into that. Okay, so then the mountain climbing that you describe now, that's more secured. But all of those are, you're roped up, you, you're sitting with uh, two people, so you have one person climbing mm -hmm. and a second one standing at the bottom holding the rope so that if anybody should fall, you can catch them. It sounds a little weird to say that they're at the bottom and they can catch you, but you're taking <laughs> a rope up with you and you're clipping it into various bits of gear that you've placed or that are drilled into the, into the mountain as you go up so that if you fall, then the other person at the bottom will be pulled up and, and uh, the person who's falling will, will be caught. So that's the first type of three? Those are the, the, the traditional climbing and the sport climbing. Difference there being that the one is self-placed gear and the other one is bolted gear that's actually drilled into the rock and, and secured like that. Then the, the last one, which I'm going to focus on mostly this evening, is bouldering. And bouldering actually started um, really by trad climbers and sport climbers who wanted to get strong. So in the off season they would go and find a rock somewhere and find some difficult moves on it and get strong um, with no indoor gyms around. That was a, a favorite uh, way of, of getting strong in the off season. Over time that's actually become a huge sport in its own right. Um, and in fact, we have here in the Western Cape, in, in, uh, in uh, Cedarburg, we have one of the top five bouldering destinations in the world. And people come from li literally everywhere in the world to come and climb in Rocklands in, uh, in the Cedarburg. You mentioned that we're going into bouldering season now. What would make this time of the year ideal for this particular type of climbing? Uh, it's the cold weather. Um, believe it or not, people, uh, the bouldering, um, people like to do in really cold weather. Uh, it, it gives your, your hands don't sweat in, in the cold weather and, and the rock becomes more, the friction on the rock is better in, in cold weather. So the professional rock climbers will follow the cold weather around the world. Um, and in our winter season, they'll be here in, in, in Rocklands in the Cedarburg and later on they'll move to Fontainebleau in, in France and from there they'll move to wherever else they, uh, their little circuit of, of climbing is. So the bouldering season is about to start in, in the Western Cape. Uh, we have our national championships coming up on the 1st and 2nd of April. That's not an April Fool joke, it's real. <laughs> <laughs> um, and and I recently been walking on the on the mountain with one of these things and, and it usually attracts a lot of attention. When you're walking with a pad like this on your back, uh, we get a lot of comments. Have you been camping? Are you going to go base jumping? Um, all sorts of comments. People really have no idea what you're doing. So I thought I'd take a little time out to just explain what bouldering is all about. So this is really just a foam rubber pad with some straps and things to make it more like a backpack so that you can carry it. Mm -hmm. We would often go up with two of these strapped to your back and it, it becomes quite a bulky thing attracting some attention from uh, other daytime, uh, day, day hikers and, and so on. But this is really the gear that you need to, to go bouldering. What, 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 what is that for? 
uh, I'll get to that in a minute. Ah. So we have climbing shoes, which look a bit tatty and, and worn out here, but that's, it's, it's basically a, has a, a sticky rubber sole mm -hmm. with some other features that you can drag your, it, it's got good friction on the top and the heel and various other things to help you get up a, a, a boulder, which you'll see in one of the, um, on a video clip that we're gonna show a little later. And we have a, a, a chalk bag which is literally just a bag full of chalk. I'm not going to do it in here because we'll have chalk all over the show, but you put that on your hands very much the same way as gymnasts do, except that it's to stop your hands from sweating and to increase the friction rather than to make them slip on, on, a, uh, uh, on, a, on a bar as a gymnast mm -hmm. do. And then this foam rubber pad is to land on when you fall. Um, so bouldering is not done with a rope. So you climb free um, you don't go up terribly high maybe uh, five meters maximum mm -hmm. but that's far enough to hurt yourself if you fall so we land on a pad like this most of the time you'd land vertically but if you do land badly or you, you don't want to twist ankles and and things you know, you how many times so have you landed on your old faithful. Yeah. <laughs> um, with bouldering, you fall many times in any attempt at a, at a, a, a boulder problem. Mm -hmm. So th the boulder problems are generally pretty difficult. They are hard technical moves. You're not going to get it right in the first time you go and you will fall 10, 20 times in one session. Uh, so that, that's why we carry two of those up. And, and if you go in a group, you might see at the bottom of a boulder, you'll see five or six of these pads lying around the bottom of a boulder um, so that people can they take turns in, in trying, trying the problem. Okay. And it, it's quite surprising. You, you would have walked past, if you've ever walked on a mountain, you would have walked past many good bouldering problems without realizing that you've done so. Um, any large boulder that has some reasonable faces on it is a, is a challenge for a boulderer. And in fact, if you think back to children, what do children do when they go out on the mountain? They find something to climb on. It's a very natural mm. activity to take part in. It's adults that tell them, no, don't go up there, it's dangerous. Careful, don't do that, don't do this. And that instills the fear in us right from the beginning. So well, well, you know, you, you got us really excited about this bouldering okay. thing and we've got, we've got a video. You've brought a video for us to watch. So we'll have a look at that right now. Great. So that was about a five meter boulder that he climbed. You want to tell us a little bit about that? Yes, yeah, certainly. Um, so that, that was one of our talented young climbers. He's 15 years old at the moment. And uh, that was a, a pretty hard grade climb. Uh, from the video, you might remember that there, 
very, very little in the line of handholds on the way up, and uh, it, it involved a lot of compression. So it was just basically squeezing the rock like that and working your way up the up the mountain. And at the end of it, you'll see, uh, or up the rock. So at the end of it, you'll see he was so exhausted he just fell down and and lay on top of the rock. Um, so. That, that's in, in essence what bouldering is all about. Very hard problems, really makes you incredibly strong and really easy to get into. Because so that, the training that, then, the training, would, it, would the focus be on upper body strength or is it? It's, it's entire body, core mostly. Um, so the, the core strength is, is key to that, particularly that type of climb. Mm. Um, and and it, it's so easily accessible. That boulder is a 10 minute walk from Clovelly um, so you, from where you park your car, it's 10 minutes away and there are amazing problems from that really difficult problem uh, all the way down to really easy problems that anybody can do. And I would really encourage any youngster, um, when, when, kids are when, when you're walking with your kids on the mountain, let them climb something. Uh, it's so good for them, for their strength, for their for their mental development and sense of achievement and so on. Chris, with, really with Western Cape being one of the most beautiful destinations in the world, mm. um, I'm sure climbing is, is pretty hot here for, for anybody that, that's interested in that sport. Have you seen a growth in your numbers in your federation over the years? Oh, absolutely. No, it, it, it's going to be a huge sport, um, not only because of the Western Cape being a very accessible but uh, climbing has recently been uh, accepted as an Olympic sport and in the 2020 uh, Olympics in Tokyo climbing will be included and we're going to definitely see a huge increase in the number of people just from the, the visibility of it they're not going to the Olympics but just because of the visibility of the sport um, we will see a lot more people on our in in our gyms and and in our uh, on, on our rocks around Cape Town. Well, well, speaking about the gyms, are there indoor facilities where people can come and get exposed there, to the sport? There are great indoor facilities, and and that's really the place to start, I guess. Um, you, people, many of the kids will have been to parties at these gyms, uh, kiddie parties, and. Uh, that that's the place to start. We, we've already seen uh, in the last year, we've had three or four new gyms spring up in Cape Town. And the, the old traditional one, City Rock, is going to be moving to just around the corner here. And have, that, that'll be probably the biggest climbing gym in the world, if not at least the Southern Hemisphere. So we're going to see Cape Town is going to be a center for climbing in the future. So first and second of April in the Cedarburg? No, no, no. The, 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 that's in observatory in the climbing gym. Oh. It's an indoor, indoor competition and that's going to be the national championship. So if anybody would like to come down and have a look and uh, see, see what climbing is all about, you're very welcome to come and join us and, and get a feel for the competition side of climbing. So where can people get more information about this federation and this sport? You can check out our Facebook page. That's probably the best one. We have a we website as well, uh, westerncapeclimbing.co.za or the Facebook page, which is just facebook.com and slash westerncapeclimbing. And that's probably the easiest way to start off with getting information on that. And you'll be competing as well at the national no, championship? No, no, no. Not, my, not me. I just administer it and uh, the do, the organizing, <laughs> do the organizing of things and leave the, the, the hard stuff to those more capable. Oh, well, we, we wish you a successful tournament nonetheless. Thank and thank you for joining us today. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Okay. So up next, we have um, Patrick Connolly and PJ Williams, and they'll be here to tell us about a junior, the upcoming junior soccer tournament, the Bay Hill Tournament. Don't go anywhere. <laughs>